Good morning, YouTube. If you watched my Bull Run GT rally video, you know that I had a little bit of a thing with my oil and it leaking kind of everywhere across the country. When I installed my S-Line exhaust, I accidentally nicked the oil line. Now, I don't know exactly what I did. It's highly suspicious that I hit it with the Sawzall. Probably what happened. But anyway, so we put on a Band-Aid fix that got me home. So the good news is right now it's not leaking any of the oil. The bad news is I still need to replace that oil line. And we need to make sure that the transmission has the proper amount of fluid. So it's not actually trans fluid. It's actually DCT fluid. So it's dual clutch fluid, which is a little bit tricky. Today, we're going to replace the oil line for the DCT system on the Ferrari 458 and we're going to top off the DCT fluid which is kind of a fascinating process. So Ferrari actually recommends that you buy the Shell DCTF3 fluid. And unfortunately, I could not find that anywhere in the United States. So I looked up for alternatives and basically everything said that either the Motil multi-DCTF fluid is acceptable or the Redline DCT fluid is also acceptable. And I got the Motil simply because it was the only stuff I could get fast so i had to get it shipped here next day air and this was the only stuff available everything else was either back ordered or whatever so if you need to get this fluid be aware that you're gonna have to probably order ahead of time whatever fluid you're getting whether it's the red line or the motel or the shell it's it's not something you're gonna find on the shelf easily so maybe ferrari would carry it i'd have to go down to the actual dealership i didn't really feel like paying the dealer markup this stuff is not cheap either though this stuff is about 20 bucks a bottle the dct system on the 458 has eight and a half quarts so we're not sure how much i actually leaked out my assumption is i probably leaked out somewhere between one and two quarts uh, obviously i've got five quarts just to be safe so that way i have plenty of extra probably not going to need all five probably only going to need one really but just to be safe rather have too much than too little all right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to back up the car and kind of center it in the garage that way i can get the lifts out because we are going to have to pull the under tray and the diffuser off all right let's get a cold start on my ferrari 458 with the s-line exhaust <laughs> Ah yes, the annoying thing about this car is every time you gotta do anything under the car, you have to pull off the bottom tray. So yes, we're gonna pull off the bottom tray and the diffuser just so we have proper access. I know you've seen me do this a hundred times, so I'm not gonna show you the entire thing, but after doing it this many times, I've learned kind of the tricks to do it fast. And what I found is the first thing you do is just unbolt the sides and the little, the air duct that goes to the brakes. So if you undo those first, then jack the car up in the air, then undo the center bolts and you can get all those off. Then it goes a lot smoother and saves you a bunch of time. So that's, I think, the best way to do it if you're like me and you don't have the luxury of a four post lift. Obviously, if you do, that's totally different. Even a two post lift, you're still gonna, un you're gonna have the same problems because the, the tray is going to get into the jack points and you're gonna get screwed when you do that. So I got the bottom tray off and as you can see, the oil spill was in the back and it is completely dry. So the good news is we didn't leak anymore after our temporary fix. All right, so as you can see, the temporary fix is just that hose clamp around a piece of rubber and obviously it stopped leaking for the moment. We are gonna replace that entire line. So we need to unbolt it way up there in the front. We need to get this heat shield off for the exhaust and then the other side of it is somewhere behind this heat shield. Actually, so I was looking at it and the line is on the outside of the heat shield so we don't even need to pull it off. That's kind of nice. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect this little clamp or this little holder. So it turns out that line is held up by a T25 Torx bit, not an Allen. I didn't see that at first. The line itself is held on by a 10 millimeter nut. Oh yeah, it's nice and loose. That's easy, thank God. I was hoping it wouldn't be too terribly tight. 
I do think that's going to leak some oil, so we'll find out in just a second. I have a drain pan here just in case. Surprisingly, no oil. Or at least very, very little. Same thing with this one in the back. Okay. Oop, the crush washer. There's the line in our glorious fix. So I'm actually gonna, just out of curiosity, undo our fix and take a look and see what exactly the damage looks like. So looking at this line, it looks almost certainly like I hit it with the Sawzall because that's not like a regular, like just hit it with a hammer kind of look. It's got like a couple slashes in it. So yeah, I definitely screwed up and hit it with the Sawzall. <sighs> yep. That sucks. All right, so I'm just waiting for Josh to get here. Once Josh gets here, we'll put on the new line, top up the fluid, and get this sucker back on the road. Time to drink a beer, I guess. A few moments later. Woohoo! We got a new line with no damage to it. Yeah, you can kind of see how it's, uh, the other one's kinked. Yeah, my bad. All right, well, we're gonna get this new line in, and then we're gonna have to fill it up with a bunch of DCT fluid. Let me get this sucker in there. there at least you pick something easy to change the brake yes this was actually surprisingly easy to deal with I'm enjoying watching you suffering for your mistake I will pay dearly it's all rule number one aim away from the hose <laughs> Cut away from the hose. <laughs> yeah, I should have cut that way. I should have cut that way. What you should have was <laughs> unbolted the cats from the Shh. car. <laughs> Just <laughs> taking the exhaust out without cutting is what you should have done. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> Stop talking sense and logic. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be normal, guy, if you did it the right way. That's true. I always love when people are like, oh, you're, you're such <laughs> amateur. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the name of the channel? Did it say professional guy supercar? Like Ferrari master yeah, repair channel. Ferrari mechanic supercar? No. Dan the dumbass who learned by YouTube videos and bullshittery. I used to change headers on my Chevelle. I am definitely working on my F1 transmission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is this nuts and bolts? Oh, right. New line is in. Good job, Dan. Thank you. Okay, got the new line in. Josh is here, and Josh is gonna assist me with the checking of the DCT fluid level. So it's a bit interesting. The way you do it is, according to the manual, so this is the manual. I actually read the manual, believe it or not. RTFM. Yes, <laughs> yes, RTFM. Because it's very important not to screw this up. So it says, have the car on a level surface so it's level that's good uh step two is going to be start the car warm up the engine and the engine temperature should be between 40 degrees celsius and 50 degrees celsius which is we'll have to look that up conversion about but probably about the proper running temperature temperature of the actual dct fluid cannot exceed 80 degrees celsius we're actually going to plug in my launch and monitor that temperature and make sure that we don't exceed 80 degrees Celsius. And then we actually check the fluid level with this little thing. So we'll show you that thing when we pull it out. And then we're gonna add the fluid as necessary. Hi. Oh, Megan's here. It's Friday night. Yeah, Friday long, night. Long week. Yes, and we're working on cars because we're idiots. Oh. Well, I'm not. Well, you're just standing around. I'm tired. I know. You got wine though. <laughs> that is true. I wish I had more wine. <laughs> we actually have to run the engine while we're checking this uh, and make sure it's between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna check it real quick just cause I wanna sh uh, show you guys what the plug looks like and stuff before the engine's running cause obviously it's gonna be harder to hear me once the engine's running. But this is the right plug right here on the left side of the engine. Or on the left side of the transmission I should say. When we pull this, Right, we should see some fluid come out. Very, very, very long plug. There it goes. And that's that's normal because when it's at full temperature and you're driving around, the oil splashes around, a little bit will make its way into that tube. So you will always get that little bit of splash when you take the plug out. So now... How do you get the tube out? We, we don't want to get the tube out. Oh. The tube stays in. Oh, okay, so we just leave it like that? Yep, now we warm it up and make sure that at temperature, fluid dribbles out. 
because as it gets hotter, the fluid level rises. Expand. Uh huh. Basically, there's a tube that goes vertical up inside the transmission. So right now, the fluid level is below the top of the tube. Okay. As the fluid gets hot, the level rises, and it should rise to over the point and where overflow. It, uh huh. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it makes sense then just to leave the plug out, wouldn't it? Yep. Oh, okay. So we'll just start the engine, leave the plug out, and then if we don't see fluid come out once it gets between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius, then we add fluid. Correct. Perfect. Okay, now I understand. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So Josh has the car fired up. We're waiting for it to get to about 120 degrees on the engine temperature. And we gotta make sure that we don't get above 80 degrees Celsius on the trans temperature. And it's supposed to be in reverse. So he's got it in reverse. We just put on the brake. We'll go into the engine module and watch coolant temperature first because... Oh yeah, because we can't see it. Yeah, okay. All right, so we got the coolant temperature right now. It's 102. We're waiting for it to get to 120, right? No more than 120. Between yeah. 100 and 120. Oh, between 100? It's already there. So I should go check it, right? Might as well. All right. Well, there's definitely no fluid coming out. So we didn't have any fluid come out, so we're gonna add fluid, which is what we expect because we knew it leaked out probably, I don't know, a quartish. So now we're gonna add more fluid. All right, so we got an aspiration system. Do you yep. pour the fluid in there? Yeah, I'll have to dump this out and then we'll pour it in. Okay. This has got a pentosin in it for F1 system, so we'll have to dump oh. it out, put some of yours in, push it through and clear Wash it, it out, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna screw in this hose right here. So what we're basically gonna do is just blast in a ton of fluid, then pull that out, and it's a dump out a bunch of fluid, and that should be enough. So as long as when we're done, it should be spilling fluid consistently, is the theory, I guess. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, we're just kind of clearing out some of the old gunk that's in there. Oh yeah, I can see it pushing through. There it goes. So we got that screwed in. We're gonna pressurize it and push in a bunch of fluid. We're gonna probably overfill it with fluid. We're pretty much guaranteed to overfill it with fluid. And then when we pull the plug, it's gonna dump out a bunch of stuff. All right, so you can see it going in. I feel like I'm gonna have a properly functioning transmission again. <laughs> you might. <laughs> Hopefully. Oop. All right, nearing the end of the fluids. That's almost two quarts. So we're gonna definitely get a shitload that comes out no matter what. I would, in the, in I the, would expect so. I don't expect it to be two quarts low. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go for it. So while I was sitting there running, we were already at 120, so then it warmed up to 130. Oh, gearbox can't be more than 180. Nice. But transmission is supposed to be 100, or uh, engine cool is supposed to be 100 to 120. So we gotta wait like another 10 minutes or something. Probably. Okay. All right. So it, it pushed a ton out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A ton came out. Yeah, it was like, like a small stream. Very, very thin. Because if you have too much in it, it will push it out the over, you know, the vent, and you'll end up with a mess. It's all kind of shit anyway. Uh huh. You'll end up with a mess anyway. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want it pouring out like a faucet, but you want something coming out. Yeah, it was coming out like a, a pretty low trickle. Okay. All right. There. I'd say that should be safe then. Woohoo! Back in business.
Okay, so as you can see, it probably is easiest with two people. So one person in the car, putting it in reverse with their foot on the brake, the other person underneath the car, checking the actual drain plug. So it's kind of weird. Again, you basically fill it up, you overfill it effectively, and then you pull the plug and it dumps out all the excess. And then once it gets down to like a low trickle, you're good enough, plug it up. And you gotta do it while the engine temperature is between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius and the temperature of the actual trans fluid is below 80 degrees Celsius. So you are gonna need some sort of like like scan tool or something to read those numbers. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, it's not hard. It's just, it's like juggling lots of balls in the air at the same time. Very specific balls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just, you gotta be doing this specific thing at this specific moment and blah, blah, blah. And so it's, it's like, it's almost like you only have a limited amount of time to check it, you know, and just, I don't know. Yeah, like this, I mean, it's 50 degrees out and the car warmed up to 125 Instantly. degrees instantly and then it's been it's just been sitting there we let the car sit for 10 minutes and you turn the key on and it's still at the same temperature yeah so once you cross your temperature thresholds for getting an accurate reading you're pretty much done for a pretty good period of time because it takes so long for it to cool down yeah that, I, if we missed that window we would have had to let it sit overnight probably yeah yeah through that all right well now we just gotta put back on all the shit that i took off oh yeah this is why we're doing it that's why we're doing it oh look at Oh shit, who is that? That would be you. <laughs> Are we officially saying your company yet? Yeah. Yeah? Sure, why not? All right. Exotic What's the worst that could happen? Oh. Uh, did you know? So Josh's shop is now actually a shop? Yeah? Sort of? Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. Exotic Power Performance, that's the name of it. So. It's, it's a legally registered entity at least. That is true, that is true. If you happen to need some work done on exotics, that guy happens to know how to do that stuff. Sometimes. Most of the time. Every third Wednesday of months that begin with J, but not on even years. <laughs> Makes it kind of tricky to figure out. All right, let's get this sucker back on the road. All right, got the stupid panels back on. We're put it back on the ground, and she is ready to rock and roll. Also important note, while Dan was under there struggling with belly pants, I made sure to do a quick walk around and check the tires for strange weir and screws and nails oh. and rocks and other things while it's up in the air and easy to check because uh that's a good move yes tire health is very important when you plan on driving a car for two days straight at fairly spirited speeds yes yeah i did check them believe it or not myself so okay, i cool. actually aired them up because they were a little low because of the cold temperature nice and the weather went to shit in texas and now it's cold so i did put more air in them i got them back up to 30 psi and then i did check the tread depth inside and outside and we're that was good but i didn't do the full rub check for screws but i probably should have yeah, well, now we know for sure it's been double checked. Can't yeah. check tires too many times. No, no. Remember, kids, that's literally the only thing between you and the road. Oh, we got the the shop dog. Oh, shop dog. Oh, Hi. hello. Ah. He's going to the vet tomorrow. Oh, are you getting a checkup? Yeah, yeah he's, no, he's got a gimpy left leg going on. We think he jumped. <laughs> oh, are you the happy? Are you happy? <laughs> oh, scratches, yeah. You get some scratches, huh? This is yeah. the sweetest dog ever. Oh, Mo. Yes, you're a good boy. Okay, YouTube. Car is done. Ready to kick some ass tomorrow. So we are going on the LGR Hill Country Rally. And then the next day, we're going on another rally. So yeah, we had to get this car situated because Josh and I are the sag wagon, basically. Josh is technical support. We're not going to go driving super crazy since we can't like get arrested or you know get indisposed since we're kind of needed should be pretty fun so you guys are obviously gonna want to see that video it'll be coming out very soon so we're gonna go film that tomorrow but in the meantime please like share and subscribe this video i appreciate when you guys do that hit the notification bell if you are so motivated to do so but i do appreciate when you guys do those sorts of things it helps my channel out and i appreciate it greatly you guys are amazing thank you so much for watching we're gonna be doing a lot of car stuff it's gonna be sweet <laughs> oh no the mo hi mo hi 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 Hi. See anything interesting, huh? Just wagging. Wagging it. Come on, Mo. Come on. Moses, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on Moses. Come oh, on. Come on. You're... Come on. Come on. Go, your limpy self. Moses, baby. Come on.